All right, hi, welcome back, Attorney Steve Vondren. Welcome to another exciting episode of Vondren Legal Hour. Okay, we are talking in this video about the dangers of the editorial license. This is something, I, there are some major pitfalls if you get, even if you go and you pay for your stock art, like I do, I use photos in my blogs and this and that and the other. And if you're, even when you're paying a service, like say you're paying um, iStock Photo, that's one that I use, and Getty Images, so forth, Adobe's, um, you need to be careful because I just noticed this the other day, I was going through searching and I found a picture of a person and I was like, perfect, that's a perfect photo. And just before I went to click the purchase button, add it to my cart, I noticed it said editorial rights only. And I was like, wow, okay, I better check this out here. I don't know what, not quite sure what that means. But these end user licensing agreements, um, you know, they contain terms that you need to follow. But this is was really kind of tricky because I was like, you know, if I push this button right now, I can, I'm bound by the contract. I can only use the editorial content in certain manners. So I know it's a total pain, but you got to get in. This is why I call it fineprintlawyer.com. I call it fineprintlawyer. It's you, you got to read these, these agreements because photo hounds, uh, photo infringement is on the rise. In my opinion, it looks like more and more companies are trying to get money for this, that, and the other. They're trying to get money because you use the photo on your website. They're trying to get money because you're using, I had a case just the other day, this popped up, editorial content. Somebody said, well, your client can't use that. It's you know, She's outside the uh, boundaries under editorial license. And I was like, well, how's that? I, I don't understand. I don't agree. So, but these are the things that are going on. Failure to pr provide attribution. Say somebody is allowing their photos to be used for what we call creative commons, which, which allows you to use a photo as long as you give them attribution or you use it within one of the com creative common guidelines. If you don't know what creative commons are, I've got a great video, Attorney Steve, Creative Commons. Make sure you watch that because you got to know what's going on here or you find yourself in a copyright infringement action. So a lot of people, they don't take this serious. They think it's maybe kind of a joke or, you know, no, no one's ever going to find out. The world's too big and you're just, I get this all the time. Well, I'm just one tiny little person. Yeah, well, they don't care. They One tiny little person has five to $10,000 or more to give them and that's this is what's happening. So attorney Steve, I'm out here. I'm in the trenches. We do a lot of these different photo cases, software infringement. So I want you to be aware of this editorial content issue. You are taking some risks if you are going in blindly and you're not reading the end user license agreement, okay? So you have to read the agreements. Now, I'm gonna go over Getty Images, okay? I pulled down off their website, this said current as of April 2019. This is another thing. The policies change, okay? So when you would license a photo, print out the policy that you're working under because things could change. And what you don't want to do, three years down the road, four years, five years, somebody accuses you of using some content improperly and you say, well, that's, I read the license agreement. Pull out your folder and you say, here it is. This is what it said. I read it before I used it. And that kind of stuff is going to help you if you ever get to court or somebody's trying to say you're a willful infringer and seek thirty dollars to $150,000 under the copyright laws. You'll have your folder. You'll have the key provisions underlined. And you can make the argument that this is innocent. If, if this is infringement at, at all, this is innocent infringement. So you'll be able to make that argument, okay? So, But I want to go over this um, Getty thing because... Even if you're using these editorial licenses properly, there's a lot of little um, little glitches that I not not glitches, but little issues that you should be concerned with. And I'm just going to go over those right now. Okay. So again, I pulled this down. Now, editorial content is basically news, sports, entertainment, things that are you know commonly public news, public affairs, newsworthy. And so they have photos taken by some of the top photographers, but they want these photos used in certain ways, okay? So let's take a look at it. I'm in the what's called the Images Content 
Licensing Agreement. I'll say it again, Images Content Licensing Agreement. And some things about the uh, editorial. Number one, um, under Section 3A, none of the photos that you're going to get can be used in a defamatory manner. So, And you may not be aware of that. You may say, well, I bought the photo. I can do what I want with it. But if you're using the photo and you're using it to defame whatever whoever's in the photo, you might have a problem. I mean, who would even think? But if you didn't read the license, you wouldn't know that. 3B, certain uses are not permitted. Actually, let me go to 3C first. It's okay to crop the photo if you're keeping the editorial integrity. So you may not be aware that you can't just go and transform it and do whatever you want with the photo. You have to keep the editorial integrity, whatever that means. Those are words that lawyers can fight about. Um, But you have to keep the integrity, but you can crop the photo. Did you know that? So if you're not reading your licensing agreements, you wouldn't know this, okay? So you should, again, print it out whenever you're buying a license. And I know it's a lot of work, but at least from time to time, you need to be doing that, okay? Keep a folder. Uh, 3B, 3B is in biscuit. No commercial use, no promotional use, no advertorial use, no endorsement use, no advertising or merchandise use, okay? So these editorial photos are not to be used in any of those manners. Commercial, promotional, advertorial, endorsement, advertising or merchandise, okay? So if you're using it in any of those manners, in technicalities, you are least breaching the contract and somebody may argue that this is a copyright violation because you're you're violating the rights, okay? And now that's a whole nother um, broadcast, another podcast we're gonna do conditions versus covenants and what's the difference when is it a breach of contract and when is it a copyright case but that's beyond the scope of this video so that's 3b so that's very important now one other one that's incredibly important is is according to section 3b you want to use the editorial content only for newsworthy and general public interest items, okay? What it talks about in this licensing agreement is these rights of publicity, these rights of publicity, in case you don't know what that is, every person has, a, in California anyway, where I practice law, a right to the, their name, image, and likeness and to not have other people commercialize that. So what they're telling you, and you probably would never know this again unless you pulled up the license and read it, is that the any images or buildings, identifiable people, identifiable products, identifiable logos, identifiable works of art, these things may have to be cleared separately. Now you may say to yourself, well, wait a second, I'm here on Getty Images, they're offering stuff for sale, I'm buying it, and you're telling me I still got to go clear rights on where there's people in the pictures? Yes, that's what they're telling you, okay? So if you don't do that, you may not only be violating and breaching their agreement, but you may be setting yourself up for a right of publicity lawsuit in states like California and New York, which I know have right of publicity statutes on the books. Why? Because these are entertainment capitals of the world. So you have to be very careful. Now, Getty will tell you that we will tell you when you're going to buy the image, it will tell you there whether it's rights cleared or not. And I went and looked. Yes, it did. And But, you know, again, the average person that's not really looking at this or somebody who accidentally uh, purchases one of these images wouldn't know that, okay? So it's very important to bear in mind that these photos, especially if there's people, according to the licensing agreement, they need to be used for newsworthy, general public interest things in, in what, under the California statute, what we refer to as public affairs, okay? If you're using it for that, those are potential exceptions to the right of publicity where things are being used for general public interest, public affairs, okay? So it's very important to at least understand that. Not too many people have any clue about that, okay? Um, there's a section 3E. This is if you're making what's quote-unquote sensitive uses of a photo if your use content that features models or property in connection with a subject that would be unflattering or unduly controversial to a reasonable person for example sexually transmitted diseases you must include one that the content is being used for illustrative purposes only and two 
any person depicted in the content is a model. For example, you could say stock photo posed by model. No disclaimer is required for content marked editorial that is used in a non-misleading editorial manner. Okay, so again, little restrictions, guidelines, things you have to follow. Uh, very, very important. Um, six, section six of the agreement, attribution. Do I need to include a photo credit? Who, I mean, who would think of this? You do not need to include a photo credit for commercial use. But if you're using content for editorial purposes, that's what we're talking about here, you must include a credit adjacent to the content or if in the production credits, the credit should be in the following form or is otherwise stipulated in the caption information accompanying the content on the Getty Images website, photographer's name, collection name via Getty Images. So did you know there was this attribution requirement? Um, it's again, if you're not following this, somebody says, Hey, you're causing problems here. You know, who knows? It's, it's a breach of contract or something else. Okay. Um, so again, attribution, another little clause, um, number nine, a indemnification. Did you know there was an indemnification clause in this agreement? What's that mean? That means if somebody says, Hey, um, they were using my image, my, my publicity rights were not cleared, nobody cleared them, and they were using my image to sell a product or raise money or to promote a company or its goods or services or using on a book or magazine cover, I didn't get paid. Uh, now you have a right of publicity problem, so naturally they may say, well, let's go sue Getty, let's go sue uh, this, you know, our, our guy who's downloading the photos, let's go sue them both. You're indemnifying Getty, it says it right here, you agree to indemnify and hold harmless Getty images and its parents, subsidiaries, affiliates, and content suppliers, and each of their respective officers, directors, and employees from all damages, liabilities, and expenses, including reasonable outside legal fees. Did you know all this? Okay, so there's an indemnification clause in there. You can go in there and read it. Okay, um, so that's section 9A. 10B, 10B as in basketball. Did you know there was an audit provision in here? So upon reasonable notice, you agreed to provide Getty Images sample copies of projects or end uses that contain licensed content, including by providing Getty Images with free of charge access to any paywalled or otherwise restricted access website or platform where content is produced. In addition, upon reasonable notice, Getty Images may, at its discretion, either through its own employees or through a third-party audit, audit your records directly related to this agreement and your use of licensed content in order to verify compliance with the terms of the settlement, blah, blah, blah. If there's any things that should have been paid, in addition to paying Getty Images the amount of underpayment and any other remedies to which Getty is entitled, I guess that could be a lawsuit, who knows, you also agree to reimburse Getty Images for the cost of conducting the audit. So did you know that? This is why if you're going to be agreeing to these terms, you should know what you're agreeing to. You know, if you show up in court and say, judge, I'm sorry, I didn't read the whole, I didn't read the whole agreement. It's too long. I mean, I don't have time to do all this and I wouldn't know what it meant if I did read it. That's not going to work. You know, these are, these are usually deemed to be enforceable. So you want to know what's in here. Okay. Other issues, like I said, because and this could be Getty, this could be any other company you're working with, you want to make sure you know what you can do. Um, I know Getty has something where you can get extra rights, like if you want to use things for digital media or marketing, promotional, film, video, and TV, those kinds of things, retail product packaging, you can go try to secure extra rights. And they also have a clearance uh, department, it looked like, from what I could tell, that will help you on that. Um, at any rate, so these are kind of the issues. So be careful when you're accidentally downloading. Make sure you know who in your organization is allowed to use the images. Make sure you know how long you can use it for. Is it a perpetual? Is it perpetual like forever or does it only last for 30 days and then you have to renew it? If you don't renew it, then somebody says you're infringing their copyright. Okay, so there's a whole lot of things to be thinking about, but the editorial content in general, is meant to be used for newspapers, magazines, you know, documentaries, non-commercial websites, editorial broadcasts, social media blog posts, basically illustrating or dealing with matters of public interest. Okay, so 
Um, that's just a quick overview. This is general legal information only. Again, read your license. I hate to keep harping on it, but I see these things end up on my desk when it turns into copyright infringement or a breach of contract and somebody wants to get thousands of dollars for this, that, or the other, and you're ending up in a legal mess because you didn't know you didn't know you were using an editorial photo on your commercial blog, okay? So um, I hope this is helpful. I mean, this is really, I mean, this is a very good podcast to share with other people. If you gave me a link back to attorneysteve.com, that would be great. But, sh- but tell people because they don't, people don't understand, and I'm not signaling out Getty Images here, but there's other companies that will try to make big, mount- big uh, mountains out of these little molehills about how you're using a photo, okay? So again, I hope that's been helpful. Attorneysteve.com here if you need help with photo infringement, software infringement, torrent defense, peer-to-peer file sharing, all kinds of technology and internet law, intellectual property, you know where to find us on the web at attorneysteve.com. I hope this video has been helpful for you. We're here in the trenches just trying to help everybody know what's going on in this new world where you're bound by your licenses and click wrap and everything else that's going on. Okay. I got to run. Have a great evening. We will have a lot more podcasts and videos coming up for you this month. It's going to be a real great month. So make sure you're bookmarking us. And in particular, check out our website with our video channel. We are getting close to 15,000 subscribers now. Moving up fast. People are enjoying our videos. So we really appreciate it. But you can find those at attorneystevevideos.com. That's attorneystevevideos.com. Have a great evening.